through sin. The heart is hardened through sin. Rebellion. There is a list of sins that people do unwillfully. That people do willfully. That people do willfully because there is no fear of the Lord before their eyes. There is none that does good. No, not one. There is none that does good. No, not one, the word of God says. The Bible is very clear and the Bible is indeed God's word. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. You can't allow the media to give you good news. Because when you watch the media, it's always about bad news. Somebody's getting murdered. Somebody is sick. Wars, rumors, the things that Jesus spoke about in Matthew 24 and 25. Jesus Christ is returning. You know how blessed you are if you do not receive counsel from the world? The word of God says in Psalms chapter 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Why would I consider the, un the, the media or the advice from those who are not saved or profess to be Christian ungodly? Well, let's look at the lifestyle. Examine your lifestyle. Examine yourself to see that there you are in the faith. Faith in Christ Jesus. You put your trust in the Lord. How do you harden not your heart? How do you harden not your heart? The word of God says that and, and through repentance, this is Psalm 51. David, he said, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Why did he say that? Why did he pray that? Because he wanted, because one, he feared the Lord and he sinned greatly before a holy and righteous and just God who is angry with the wicked every day so blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful but guess what his delight is in the law of the Lord the word of God and in his law does he meditate on it day and night you know if you meditate on this day and night you will be as a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season and his leaf will not wither and whatsoever he does he will prosper what does that mean when you obey Jesus Christ who is the true vine as John 15 describes when you follow when you dwell in the true vine and allow the husband man to purge you this is after repentance this is after baptism this is describing enduring to the end this is describing endurance because the word of God says he who endures to the end will be saved so when you repent when you have a change of mind the spirit of the living God will transform you from the inside out and when you are baptized not just in water but through the Holy Ghost of fire there's a transformation that begins a transformation that is called deliverance. You allow deliverance to be as a burning lamp. Your righteousness that comes from Christ will be as brightness. Will be as brightness. So your light, when you obey the Lord and walk in the spirit, your light will shine before men. And men will see their men will see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. That's if they choose to. You have a choice. You hear the preacher. How can you hear the preacher? Well, the preacher is preaching. We all are ministers of the gospel of Christ Jesus. 
What is the gospel? The gospel is good news. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation for all that believe from the Jew first and also to the Greek, from the unbeliever and the believer. You must first believe that Christ is Lord. You must first believe that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Lord Jesus is righteous. I passed, a person just passed by me who I used to work with and is smoking a cigarette. You know the word of God says that your temple is, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So you were made for, for God's glory. You was created for God's glory. You was created to worship the Lord. You was created to obey Jesus Christ. Why? Because this life is temporary. And when you leave this life as a Christian and receive Christ in the air, whether it be before Christ turns, returns, or when he comes back and we come back with him, there is heaven. Heaven is, the human mind cannot describe how beautiful heaven is. You can't imagine how beautiful heaven is. Salvation is a free gift. And the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Just so you know, the wages of sin is death. What is the wages of sin? It means that when you sin willfully, you're storing up wrath in the day of judgment. The wrath of God abides on the children of disobedience. How do you know that you are disobedient? Because you are not hearing the word of God. And faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God. This is the word of God. I hold my Bible high to the heavens. The Lord sees this. The Lord sees this. Will you stand before God as a sheep or as a goat? The world describes the goat and this is how you know Satan is, de is deceptive. The, the world describes the GOAT as the greatest of all time. You hear your famous basketball players like LeBron James or Michael Jordan. And they, they say that's the GOAT right there. Described as the greatest of all time. But what did the word of God say in Matthew 25? When Jesus Christ returns in his glory and all the holy angels with him. And he will separate the people. He will separate the division from the sheep and the goats. Matter of fact, let me open that. Let me open that because you must understand the word of God is true. The word of God is true. It says here, when the Son of Man, when the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, yes, when the Son of Man comes in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. And before him shall be gathered all the nations, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will, he will set the sheep on his right hand, but guess what the goats going to go? They're going to go on the left, and there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. Then shall the king say to them on the right hand, the sheep are described as the righteous. The sheep are described as the Christians, those who obey Jesus Christ. He's going to say to the sheep, those who obey Jesus, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom 
from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and in prison and you visited me. And then the righteous, the sheep on the right hand of the Father, the everlasting Father who is Jesus Christ will say to them, Inasmuch as you did it to the least of these, my brethren, he calls you brethren. He will call you brethren if you obey Jesus, if you are sanctified and reborn. If you are born again, you will enter the kingdom of heaven. And he will say to them, inasmuch as you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Why? Because we are created in God's image and his likeness. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. I don't want no one to go there. I don't want my worst enemy to go there. Hell is a horrible place created for the devil and his angels. But men choose to go there by disobeying the Lord, by watching what they want to watch, listening to what they want to listen to that God absolutely despises, that God absolutely hates, but he loves you. God is also described in the Old Testament as jealous. Why is he jealous and why can't we be jealous? This is the reason why we can't be jealous because he is God. He is jealous because he don't want you to turn your heart to another God. He is jealous because he don't want your heart and mind to be set on another God or another idol and when you do when your desires and your heart and your mind is set on the things of this world more than God you will be classified as an idolater you will be classified as lovers of idols lovers of another God God truly loves you how does he how does he love me, Joseph? Jesus Christ, you heard John 3, 16. You heard it. But do you understand it? Do you understand the word of God, what it says? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His only, not sons, not them or we, but his only begotten son. That whosoever believes on him will not perish but will have everlasting life and eternal life Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior is Lord and Savior so when you repent when you repent when you have a change of mind and turn from doing your own thing doing what you want to do and not and, and turn from obeying yourself and deny self and turn to Christ Jesus Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God will empower you and you will desire to please God you notice in the scriptures that the Father said to Jesus no not just to Jesus but to John the Baptist and those who was listening he said this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. When Jesus was transfigured on the mount and he had Peter, John, Peter, James, and John with him and they fell asleep. And by their own, by their own desires, because they were asleep, they went up to the mount and they saw Jesus standing with Elijah and Moses the law and the prophets and Peter says let us build a tabernacle for you Jesus Elijah and Moses then a voice came from heaven a voice came from heaven God bless you saying this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hear him Fear and trembling came before them. Why? Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. 
Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel of Christ Jesus, the testimonies of Jesus and what he did for you on that tree 2,000 years ago. The creator of all things, heaven and earth, became human flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, who is fully God and fully man without sin. He was sinless. He knew no sin, the word of God says. He never violated the law of God and he couldn't because he is God in the flesh. He was, he is, and he will always be the sinless lamb of God. Within 33 years of his earthly existence, he lived a perfect life that nobody could ever live for 33 seconds. And he suffered a horrific and bloody death on the cross that he did not deserve. He was bruised for our iniquities, wounded for our transgression, and the chastisement of our peace was laid on him. He was the sacrificial lamb. They beaten him. They blindfolded him and blasphemously. They mocked him saying, who is the one that struck you? Tell me. His beard was ripped from his face. And then he carried the cross with the help of a Cyrenian. He carried the cross. A crown of thorns was planted on his head. He carried the cross and then he was nailed to the cross, hands and feet, and he hung for hours. Eli, Eli, lama stabashtani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he said, it is finished. He gave up the ghost for you. He gave up himself for you. Then he went into the belly of the earth for three days setting the captives free. And then he rose again with great power and glory from the Father, seen by many for 40 days. And then what he did after that, he ascended back into heaven with great power and glory. And Jesus Christ, the Lord, the King of Kings, the Messiah, seated on the right hand of the Father. He is coming back at an hour you do not expect. Jesus Christ will return. Do you know that? Will you believe that? Jesus Christ is true. The word of God says in Revelation chapter 1, Behold, he comes in the clouds, and every eye will see him, even they that pierced him. Even they that pierced him. All the nations, all kindreds, all tribes, all tongues will well because of him, because of Christ Jesus. Why they will well? Because the glory of Christ will return. The glory. What will you be caught doing when he returns? What will you be caught doing? Will you be caught watching the NFL or watching the NBA or caught up in the media or caught up with this COVID-19 and the distortion and the devices of the wicked, of the devil? The devil has deceived you all. The word of God says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Jesus Christ is coming. If you hear his voice, if you hear his voice, heart and not your hearts, what happens to the goats on the left hand of the Father, on the left hand of Jesus Christ, the Messiah? This is what happens to the goats, to the greatest of all time, as the world described the goat. This is what happens. And the king shall answer and say to them, Verily I say to you, inasmuch as you've done, now that's the, that's the, that's the sheep, this is the goats. Then shall he say to them on his left hand, depart from me, you curse into everlasting punishment, created for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you did not give me food. I was thirsty 
and you did not give me drink. I was in prison and you did not come to me. I was naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not come to me. Then the the lost, the unbeliever, the goats, the antichrist, the Jehovah's Witness, the Hebrew Israelites, the Mormons, those who profess to know God but in works deny Christ. They will be on the left hand as goats. And the Lord will say, depart from me, I never knew you. Do you know what's the scariest verse in the Bible? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name done many wonders and in your name cast out devils? Then Jesus Christ, the Lord, will, de will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Do you know what happens after that? After those words, the scariest words in all existence. You will have your place in hell. And after that, after the judgment, there comes a lake of fire. Hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place of torture. You will never love again. You will never smile again. You will never sleep again. You will never live joy. All the goodness goes with God because all the goodness of God is his attributes and it goes with God. There is no good thing in hell. I will hate to happen to each and every one of you if you die and allow your iniquity to be your ruin. Do you want that? Do you want that for your life? I'm telling you, if you hear his voice, heart and not your heart, the Holy Ghost that proceeds from the mouth of the Father that came through Jesus Christ is in me and in my brothers in the body of Christ Jesus. Speaks, God's word speaks so that you are able to open your heart to the gospel. Jesus Christ loves you. It is not a love that you can understand. It is not conditional. It is unconditional. Love thinks no evil. Love is not rude. Love thinks no evil. Woe unto those who describe evil as good and good evil. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is righteous, is the Holy One of Israel. The Lord loves you. He sacrificed himself. He sacrificed himself. He gave himself as a living sacrifice. Jesus Christ commands all men everywhere to repent of their sins. Do you know what my shirt says? It says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The Lord Jesus Christ commands all men to repent and obey the gospel, obey Jesus, hear him. The Father commands you to hear his son, Jesus. If you read the word of God from Genesis to Revelation, not just don't start in Genesis, but how about the, the gospel of John? It is a good book to start in. What does it say? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh in verse 14 of John chapter 1. Do you hear his voice? Because the voice of the Lord is speaking through me with the Holy Ghost. Today, if you hear his voice, heart and not your hearts. How is your heart heart? Because you do not believe. The unbelief will allow you not to enter into the rest of the Lord. That's what happened to the children of Israel who was disobedient in the Old Testament. The Lord let Moses, through Moses, set the slaves, the, the, the God's people through who was bounded for 400 years in Egypt. 
and he made a way. He parted the Red Sea. He parted the Red Sea so God's people could be free. But that yet there was people who was complaining and murmuring, who lusted after the meat as idols. What is your lust? What is lust? Lust is wrongful desire because you want it, because you desire it. But God does not want you to desire it. Lust can come in many forms. Lust can be sexual. Lust can be of money. If money is the source of your day, then money is your God. If sex, if adultery, if fornication, if alcohol, if drugs, marijuana, all things that is loved, desired more than God, you have another God and you do not serve the Bible. How can you say that, Brother Joseph? I'm struggling. Let's look at a person who just died in iniquity. His name is Earl Simmons. His name is Earl Simmons, who was known as Dark Man X. Did he die in heaven? Did he die in righteousness? His lifestyle, his lifestyle says no. He was struggling in drugs. He was struggling. He made ungodly music. And he had a funeral. And they celebrated like he went to heaven. He did not live a lifestyle to Christ Jesus who is righteous. The only one that is righteous because he kept the Father's commandments. He said in John chapter 15. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. What does abide mean? It means to dwell. What does dwell mean? It means to follow. If you follow Christ, if you dwell in Christ, if you abide Christ Jesus, you will be saved because the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. If the judgments, the judgments of the righteous are true and altogether clean, obeying Jesus Christ and the Father by the Holy Ghost is pure. The word of God says in 1 John, it says, now that we are called sons of God and it does not yet appear what we will be, but we know that when he appears, we will be like him and we'll see him as he is. And every man that has his hope in him will be purified just as he is pure. He is pure. The blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. If you repent and believe the gospel, the blood of Jesus will wash away your sin as far as from the east is to the west. Every sin will be washed away. Every bad thing that you have done will be washed away when you believe, when you repent and are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ is righteous. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit of the Lord God. The Lord God is righteous. The Lord God is the one whom you shall fear because he can destroy both soul and body in hell. Fear the one who can fear the one who can destroy the one who can destroy your body and soul in hell. Do not fear man. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. A sound mind hears the voice of God. A sound heart, the word of God says a sound heart is the life of the flesh. What is a sound heart? A heart that is sensitive to the voice of God. And sound wisdom is laid up for the righteous. How you become righteous by committing your life, your heart, and your mind to Christ Jesus. That way you can be recon reconciled to the Father and you will be made right with God. This is the gospel truth. Today, if you hear his voice, heart and not your hearts, your mind and your heart can be distorted by ungodly music. Earl Simmons, who was known as Dark Man X, made ungodly music. And when he passed away, 
the demons that was in him spread abroad and those who started listening back to his ungodly music are bound by demons but you you don't believe that you don't believe that because your entertainment your entertainment you are entertained the devil has you entertained have you not read it the scriptures that says that says I will set no evil thing before my eyes. I hate the works of them that fall away. It will not cleave to me. I will not know a wicked person. How can you say that, Brother Joseph? I'm not saying this. I'm preaching this, what this says. This is the word of God. The word became flesh. Do you believe that? If you don't believe that, there's consequences for not believing it. You don't have to believe what Brother Joseph says or my brothers who preach the gospel. You don't have to believe them. But death and hell is the consequences for not believing it. Jesus Christ loves you. Please do not harden your hearts. Please do not harden your hearts. I cry to the Lord. I pray for you any individual who hears the gospel of Christ Jesus to believe, please believe. God, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ hates unbelief. He hates it. It says in Hebrews, he talks about that in Hebrews and it was reflecting in the Old Testament when in Exodus, Numbers and Deuteronomy how the children of Israel could not enter the rest because of unbelief. Do you understand that the first word the first uh, description in Revelation 21 and 8, it says, all unbelieving. That's the first thing that got described. All unbelievers and liars and whoremongers. Matter of fact, liars was the last one. All whoremongers, all murderers and sorcerers and adulterers and all liars will have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. I would hate that to happen to you. But there is life. There is a chance. Today is the day of salvation. Salvation means delivered. If Today, if you hear his voice, if you hear the preacher, if you hear the anointing through the gospel of Christ Jesus, you will be saved. If you give your heart, your mind, and your life to Christ Jesus, I guarantee you, he will change you from the inside out and you will be empowered by the Holy Ghost. The word of God says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have been passed away. Behold, all things become new. What does that mean? Your desires will change. You begin to hate the things that God hates and love the things that God loves. If you look in this direction and hear what is being said, the word of God is being spoken clear for you not to harden your hearts. Jesus Christ is holy. Holy, holy, holy. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Jesus Christ wants you to have a renewed mind. The spirit of the living God, the Father, wants you to have a new mind. Romans 12 and 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What is the perfect will of God when you obey Jesus Christ? The Father, once again, I speak this and preach this. The Father said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Meaning, apart from Christ, you cannot please the Father. You have to be perfect. You have to be good. And your definition of good is not God's definition of good. The rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, good master or good teacher, how can I inherit eternal life? Jesus said, 
Well, you heard the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. He went through the, com through the commandments. And the rich young ruler described and said, I have kept all these things from my youth. From my youth. Jesus said, there's one thing that you lack. Go sell all your possession. Give to the poor. Pick up your cross and follow me. Did the, did the rich young ruler did that? No, he walked away sorrowfully as if he was broken hearted. Will you walk away from the preaching of the gospel sorrowfully? Do not let the word of God just cut you to the heart and have you walk away. No, you gotta ask this question. What must I do to be saved? What must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? I tell you once again that if you repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will be saved. If you obey Jesus Christ the Lord, you will be saved. The Lord loves you. Would you, let me describe the fear of the Lord. Do you fear God? Why should I fear God, you may ask. Let me ask you this. Would you sneak in a lion's den and all the lions are asleep and you decide to kick one and then decide to run? No, that would be foolish. But let me tell you this. It would be better if you did than to stand before a holy and righteous and just God. God bless you. A holy and righteous and just God. Because the word of God says, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and instruction. And if you reject the gospel, if you harden your heart, you will be classified as a fool. Why? Because the word of God says fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools are not prepared for Jesus. Jesus Christ is described as the bridegroom. Are you prepared to meet the bridegroom? Please, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. I say this with full honesty and love of Christ Jesus. The Lord does not want you to perish in your sin. He wants you to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and forever. He is Lord. He is the Messiah. He is the Holy One of Israel who created you to worship Him, to give your mind to Him, to give your heart to Him, to give your life to Him so you can have everlasting life and life eternal, life more abundantly. Will you believe that? Will you receive that? Today, if you harden your hearts, if you, let me rephrase that. I misquoted that. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. I preach with the fervent passion of Christ Jesus so that you too can be drawn closer to him. The word of God says that if you draw to, close to him, he will draw near to you. That's in the book of James. That's in the book of James. If you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. That is a promise for the, from the Holy One of Israel. And the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all sin. He is faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, all evil thinking, all blasphemy, all lies, all everything that you've ever done. 
if you say in your heart, there is no hope for me, that is a lie from the pit of hell. That is a lie fresh off the tongue of Satan. You can be saved. You can believe. You can be born again. Jesus tells Nicodemus at night, if you believe, he says, one, if you have not been born again, he will not, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again. You must be born again. Please don't harden your heart when I speak, when I speak this, when I preach this. Harden not your hearts. If you do not believe, your heart is hardened. If you reject the gospel, the heart is hardened. The word of the God describes the heart as deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God knows it. God knows that your heart is wicked. And if you believe, God will change your heart's desire. He will turn your heart from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. He will soften your heart and purify you from the inside out. And you'll begin to love the things that God loves and hate the things that God hates. Jesus Christ is the only way. He is the door. Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Do you believe that? You must believe that. Please do not harden your heart.